If you have buttons on your website, you should track at least the most important ones. That way you will know if your visitors are engaged and if they are interested in your offers. In this tutorial, I will show you two methods how to track buttons with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Also, I will show you how to build a sample report with that data. On this demo page, I have two types of buttons because they were coded in different ways. Now let me do the right click on this button and I will hit inspect. Now here you will see that it is a button and it was coded by using the button HTML tag. But if I inspect this button right here, it is actually a link that was made to look like a button. Here we see the anchor or the A tag in HTML. And here is the href attribute, which means that the button will just redirect after the click to this particular URL. Now, the reason why I am showing you this is because this will affect the way how we track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. If you're not comfortable with developer tools in the browser, then there are other ways how you can check how the button was coded. For example, if I do the right click on the link, then it will show me options to open in a new tab, new window, and so on. Now, if I do the right click on a regular button, you will no longer see those options. So let's take a look how can we track two different types of buttons. Here I have a Google Tag Manager container. Inside that container, I have installed Google Analytics 4. And in this video, I assume that you have already done that as well. If you don't know how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. So Google Tag Manager has click tracking features, but they must be enabled. To do that, first, you need to go to variables and make sure that in the built-in variables section, you have the click variables enabled. I don't have them, so I will click configure and then I will enable all click related variables. Then the next thing is to go to triggers, then new trigger configuration, and then select either just links or all element clicks. In this case, we will start with the button that is actually a link. That's why we will be using just links trigger. For now, let's keep this trigger set to fire on all link clicks, and we will just name this all link clicks and hit save. Now let's test if this is working. So click preview. Then in this pop-up, you should enter the URL of the page where you have the button that you want to track and click connect. Now I will click the button. It will open a new tab. And if I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager and click continue, here I should see the link click. And this is the information that was tracked. In my case, I also have this unknown domain warning, but it does not matter. So I will just dismiss this. If I select the link click and I go to variables, I will see some information about the link click. For example, the text, the URL, the ID. If the button had some class, I would have the value right here. So it looks like this is working. The next step will be to create a Google Analytics 4 tag. And I mean the event tag, which will send the link click information to GA4. And of course, at the same time, we will make our trigger more precise so that the tag fires only when this particular button is clicked. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, then Tags, click New, Tag Configuration, Google Analytics 4, Google Analytics 4 Event. And here you should paste the measurement ID. You can find it by going to Admin, then Data Streams, select your website Data Stream, and copy the measurement ID right here. Then go to Google Tag Manager and paste it here. Just make sure that this is the same measurement ID that you had in your main Google Tag in this container. Then you can enter some name for the event. For sake of simplicity, I will just call this, let's say, button click. And together with this event, I could also send some parameters to Google Analytics. For example, what was the ID of the button or what was the text or what was the URL or something like that. If I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I have the ID, I have the text, and I have the URL because this is the link-based button. So I could send these together with the event to GA4. In Google Analytics, you can click on event parameters, then add parameter. And here we can enter, let's say, the text. And Google Analytics has several parameters, which are related to clicks, that it automatically recognizes. One of them is link URL. The other one is link text. And the other one is link ID. And as you can see, it is displayed as a known parameter. So then their values could be the values of these Google Tag Manager variables. 
for example, when the button is clicked, I could send the value of click ID, which is this one. If another button is clicked and its ID is different, then maybe that value would be sent to Google Analytics 4. So that can be done by clicking the variable button in the value field. First, I'm starting with the link URL. So I select click URL, then link text. Here I can select click text. And in link ID, I can select click ID. Then the triggering. So here I can click anywhere and then I could select the all link clicks trigger because that's the trigger that I previously created. But as the name implies, it will track all link clicks. I want to track only those clicks where let's say the click ID equals link button because that's the ID of this particular button. So I could click this I icon to edit the trigger. And instead of all link clicks, I will select some link clicks. And here I will pick click ID and it should contain or it should equal to the value that is right here. So link button, I will copy it and paste it right here. If the click happens on a page and this is the click ID, then my G4 event tag will fire. Now I will make this trigger name more precise. So link click and something like that. Click save. And now I will select this trigger. Finally, I will name the tag. That's my naming convention, GE for event, and then the name of the event. Maybe I could even specify that this is a link button. Click save. Let's test if this is working. Click preview. And let's go to the website, click the button. And in the preview mode, I should see the link click and here my tag has fired. Right now when I'm recording this video, there is a bug in the preview mode and it shows unknown tag type, but after a while, maybe after several refreshes, this will change the proper tag type, which is GA4 event. Nevertheless, the tag fired, but now we need to check if the data was actually received by GA4. That can be done by going to Google Analytics, then in the admin section, look for data display and debug view. And here you should eventually see the button click events. If I click it, I can see what kind of parameters were sent. And together with those parameters, I also have the link ID, link text, and link URL. If you're wondering how can you later find this data in other reports of Google Analytics 4, I will explain that later in this video. Now let's go and try to track the regular button. I already have the preview mode connected. And if you remember, I already have the link click trigger created. But if I click this button right here, I will see the success message, but I won't see anything in the preview mode unless you have the all elements click trigger created in your Google Tag Manager container. But I don't have that. I only have the just links trigger. So now if I click the button, I don't see the link click event right here. That's because if you remember, this button is not a link. It is coded as a button. So link click trigger, also known as the just links trigger will not work. We have to use another trigger type. So in Google Tag Manager, go to triggers, click new trigger configuration, and then all elements because this trigger is just for links. But for all elements, even not links, you can use the all elements trigger. For now, let's keep tracking all clicks and let's name this trigger and then click save. Let's test if this is working. Click preview. And once the preview mode has connected, I will go to the website and I will click the regular button. The success message appeared. If I go back to the website, I will see the click. The reason why it shows two clicks for me is because actually I accidentally clicked on the background as well. All element clicks trigger tracks clicks on any element. If I click on this text, for example, right now I just did that, you will have another click. Now I don't remember which one is for the actual button click, so I will click the button again and I will go to the preview mode and this is the most recent click. If I click that event and then go to variables, here I will see some information, for example, click ID and the text. There is no URL because again, this button is not a link. So what can we do to track that button? We have the ID and that could be a great way to make our trigger more precise. And we have text. So that's what we could send to Google Analytics for. 
let's go to Tag Manager and make our trigger more precise. Instead of tracking all element clicks, we should make it more precise and I will click some clicks and then I will select click ID because that's what I have here. If you don't have ID, which is fairly common, then maybe you have the click classes. If you also don't have click classes, then things will get more advanced and you will need to get familiar with a topic called CSS selectors. I explain how to work with them in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. So in my example, I have click ID, so I will just copy it without quotes and then I will add that in the trigger. And then maybe I will rename this trigger to something like that. Click save. Now let's go to tags. You could either add this trigger to the existing tag or you can create a new one. Let's say that I will create another tag. So I will click this to make a copy and then three dots, copy, and then I will rename the tag. Then I can keep the event name as it is and I will remove the link URL because regular buttons don't have URLs. Then in the triggering, I will click pencil, then remove the link click trigger and instead I will add the all elements trigger, which will track clicks only of that particular ID and then click save. Let's test if this is working. I will click preview. Once the preview mode has connected, I will go to the website, click regular button, then go to preview mode, select this event. And this is my regular button tag. Right now it is no longer showing unknown tag type, so I could click it. And if I switch from names to values, I can see what kind of parameters and their values were sent to Google Analytics 4. And you know the drill, you should also check the debug view of Google Analytics 4. If you don't see anything in the debug view, then I have a troubleshooting guide that you can find in the description of this video. Now, if I click this event, I can see the link ID and link text. Once you have tested that this is working properly, you can go to Google Tag Manager, and submit these changes so that they would go live for your website visitors. Click submit, then enter the name of the version, for example, button click tracking, and then click publish, and this will go live. Now, if you want to check the data in other reports, for example, standard reports or explorations, you will need to wait for at least 24 hours, sometimes even 48 hours, because Google Analytics requires more time to process the data. Let me show you an example of how to find that data. I haven't waited 24 hours, but I have another event, which is very, very similar. Instead of button click, it is called link click. But the structure of that event is very similar. It also has things like link text or link URL or link ID. Therefore, I think it's enough for you to understand the example. In Google Analytics 4, I will go to explore and then I will create a blank exploration. Then in the dimension section, I will click plus and select several dimensions. For example, let's say that I want to see which buttons were clicked the most, or in this case, links, and I want to do that based on the text of a link. That's why I will select link text here, click checkbox, and then we will filter down just to particular events. So that's why I will select event name and click import. Then in metrics, for now, I think it will be enough to just select event count. So select that and import. Now I will double click the event count to add it to the report and also link text. But right now I don't have any values because as I've said, I have tracked the event link click a while ago. That's why I will select a longer time period, for example, last 12 months and then apply. And then I want to look at the data only of the link click event. If we're talking about button click tracking and you have button click event name, then you will need to enter button click in the filter. Let's create that filter. So I will click here, then event name, and it must exactly match the link click because that's what I have. But in the context of this lesson, if I had real data about the button click, then I would have entered button click and then click apply. And here I have the data of the link click event and I can see how many times each link was clicked. Of course, this is a demo property with some fake data. That's why it doesn't look very realistic. But if you waited for at least 24 or maybe even 48 hours, then you should start seeing some real numbers. And that's how you can track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. 
If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.